All right, we're back. We're video number 10. Getting this guy in shape. Now what I want to do is I want to start separating the body from the lower body, upper body and lower body. So this is going to be my belt loop or my belt line. And this is as well. So I'm actually going to dip that down a little bit, bring it back up like it's tucked into his, into his elbow and then it come out over here. Now, we're keeping this one simple because the, the goal is to show you how to get this out of a block of wood, not to add, not how to add a lot of detail. So I'm not going to worry about a belt buckle or a belt or a belt loop. So I'm just going to worry about the shirt coming down here. We'll put a, we'll put a cuff on the shirt. But this is just how to get the shape. And maybe we'll do another video where we add all those little details. But anyway, right now we're just worrying about getting the, the gross anatomy. So I've drawn that line in. If you haven't drawn that line in, pause video, take a moment, draw that in. I'm going to make the shirt tuck into the pants. Or maybe just come over. We'll, well, I don't know. We'll see. We're doing this line, and we want to make sure this line stays above the where the where the shirt comes into the pants. So you can tuck that in, and we'll put that right in there. And now what we want to do is I want to. If this guy's going to be round, this is going to be a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to take my my my. I'm not going to work on the front so much as, as I am on the back. I just want to stop cut right in that cut that I just made, and then I'm going to take off these edges, and I'm just going to start in one corner. This is going to help separate that arm as well. Now this guy's not going to have much of a behind. Uh, again, you you can do that on another carving if you want to. We're not going to have a whole lot to him. Although by the time we're done, we'll have a little bit. We'll get a little bit going and we'll be able to, to round that back side a little bit. But right now it's fairly flat unless we bring the legs in. So we want it to be that way. It's, it's, it's a design choice. You can design to put a lot of, a lot of bulk on the back, back end of that guy if you want. But what I want to do is just get it up under that shirt right now. And then I can trim that shirt down to where it looks like, uh, it, looks like it fits his body. But all we've done is just added that line there and taken off a little bit of a little bit of the wood. Knowing that we're going to have to take off some at the bottom of this arm and some at the bottom of this arm, we'll go ahead and do a little bit of that. And all we're going to do is just take a little bit out, starting to separate that arm a little bit. It might be easier for some of you to use the fishtail gouge. The way I was doing it, you're slicing the, 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 the cut and so it wasn't as clean for some of you as, as you want it to. But anyway, it gives us an opportunity to thin down the back side of that leg a little bit. So you see a little bit of, little bit of dimension to it. We'll do the same thing over here. We did a cut underneath that arm. edge off of there and we're getting that shape to it again the legs are pretty hefty we'll have to trim those down a little bit and what we'll do is we'll end up giving him a backside by rolling this down and going in and then coming back out if you've ever seen a man standing got a little bit of backside there and it comes in and then it comes back out to the legs because the the pants are going to be, you know, coming up somewhat like that as well. So we'll we'll work on that a little bit, but we're working on this working on this this lower body and just trying to get a little bit of a shape to him so that we can move on to the upper part. Okay. Take a look at the front. I want to make a stop cut all the way in the groove of that V cut that I made. And so now we're just going to trim that up there. I don't want to take off a whole lot because I still haven't 
still haven't decided what what kind of upper clothing he's got. Is it going to be a, a jacket? Is it going to be a shirt? Is it going to be a shirt with a vest? We're going to monkey around with that in a little bit, but to maybe we'll add a few more details that, that we can do on that. But we're just trimming this edge to give it some kind of shape to it so that it kind of looks, makes it look like it's got, there's some sense to the design that we did. I'll cut a little bit back here on the legs, not too much. I don't want to look like his legs are sticking way back in the back, but I want some. I want a little bit of shape to it because these legs are still fairly bulky. And I don't, I don't know that I want this guy to, to have legs that look like something T-Rex would be running around on. But right now, we haven't really done much to it. So we'll take a little bit off the back. Be careful as the grain changes. You're coming around the corner. It wants to split off on you, so you got to be a little careful there. And we still haven't really separated the legs as well either. We've kept the legs fairly stocky because if we make them too thin and we get to carving and get to pull, pulling and pushing on them, we may not be able to uh, keep them from breaking off. Okay. I understand that when you go to do hands in the pockets, make sure that it's, you're following somewhat true to life. For instance, when a man puts his hands in his pockets, there's a little bit of a bulge right there. You don't want to put them things straight in there and then have it immediately curl over here and you look at it this way and go, well, where are the hands? There's no space for the hands. So just to make sure we do that, we want to make sure that somewhere around here, you've got a little bit of a bulge that you're leaving because that's where his hand is. You don't want it to look at, somebody to look at that and say, well, uh, his arms go all the way down there. Where does his hands go? Because what you're going to do you're going to cut in a, a mark right here, cut in a cut right here at the end of the sleeve on both of these arms because essentially that hand, that arm wraps around there and then there's the bulk for the hand. So we, we cut that in then we make a stop cut and we take just a little sliver out of there. We'll, we'll, we'll shape that arm a little bit later but that's where the arm is going to fit in. And that gives us room to, to trim this and make sure his hands fit in there. And so as we do that cut there, be careful how you cut because the grain is running this way, straight up and down. And if you cut it the wrong way, you're going to split off either this corner or this corner. So you got to be real careful how you do this. You don't need to take off much right now. We'll take off more because we've still got to put in the dimensions of these arms and we haven't done much of that yet. And so we got to take that into consideration when we go to do what we're doing. Okay, starting to look like a fella. A little bit. Not quite, but we still got a lot of hard edges. So let's work down here a little bit. We haven't been on the feet much. Shoes are way too big. Cowboy boots on this one. We got them tipped up a little bit here. They don't come up much, but they come up a little bit. If you've ever seen cowboys as they walk, there's that toe that tips up a little bit. We can keep that. And then the question is, if that toe tips up, what does that do to the bottom of the sole? It's got a little spacing there where the sole comes up. So we got to plan that too. So planning on how far the boot's going to go. Uh, you can make the boots that long if you want. You can move them back if you're going to thin these legs out some more. What you don't want is a real thin leg and a great big long boot. To me, I don't think that looks quite right. But if we were to say that the pants do this somewhat like that, then that gives us a boot that would, let me draw the boot on here. Boot shaft, this leg is way out of proportion, but the boot shaft is somewhat like that. And there's the back of the heel. Boot shaft comes down like this. And there's the front of the boot. So if we do that and bring it down like that, That kind of makes kind of kind of looks like sense, and then we can bring the pants all the way out to here. Let's do that a little bit. I've got a little bit of. I'm not going to take this part out right now. I'm going to move the top of the boot back, and there's a lot of cuts you can do to do that. I'm just going to go straight in and start to trim that boot back. I don't want a whole lot taken off the haft here or taken off the the long part of the boot. I'm just going to. 
keep moving that back and moving that down and moving that back again. You can use a V, a v tool, you can use, not a V tool, you can use a fishtail gouge. I like using a knife a lot of times simply because when I imagine carving, I imagine knife carving. I mentioned earlier on one of my earlier videos uh, how my Uncle Otis in Alabama, Sand Mountain, Alabama, had a little grocery store. He was my father's father's brother. Had a little grocery store, and every time I went in there, they were fellas either playing dominoes. You know, you know what a dominoes game in the South looks like. It's it's cutthroat. Them folks are always pulling out of the dog, the bone pile and slamming them down and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, there was always a pot bellied stove there, and there was some fella, usually somebody sitting around there making a pile of chips. And and I just I was fascinated by that because it was just a little old fold out pocket knife you pull out of your pocket and a little piece of wood. And I don't even remember what the wood was because. I was just fascinated watching, never asked any questions in the South at that time. You were you were a kid, so you're to be seen and not heard. You know what I'm talking about, right? Anyway, Uncle Otis would always give me an orange cream ice cream. One of those you remember those orange ice creams that you got on the stick? Uh, they were good when you were a kid and it was a hot day and you needed something cool to keep you keep you from sweating too much. Anyway, that's what I watched. I watched that when I was a kid, and I always was fascinated by somebody who could take a piece of wood and a knife and make something out of it. It's always fascinated me. I didn't do a lot of it when I was a kid other than to make sharp, sharp sticks. And when I got a little bit older, my, my t attention interest turned somewhere else. Bottom line is I, I started carving around a Boy Scout campfire. And so I really got to where I enjoyed taking a piece of, a piece of wood and going to town on it with a, with a knife and making something out of it. And, and at the time I didn't make a whole lot, but now I'm making a little bit more and there's just something about using any tool, but a, a, a certain pleasure in using a knife. So a lot of carving I do, uh, probably 80% of it is, a, is knife work. Anyway, we've, we've gotten the arms kind of separated we got the sleeve kind of separated. We've got the belly and the, and the pants kind of separated. we got the legs. What I'm going to do now, we're at 13, almost 12 and a half minutes. I'm going to pause for a minute and just take a look at it because I can see areas I need, to, I need to fix. I need to make the legs a little bit skinnier, which means I'll bring the belly in just a little bit, but I don't want to make the legs any skinnier from here. I want to take it out of here. That'll give me a backside. If I take it out of here, that moves the pants all the way back to here, and pretty soon that just doesn't start looking right. I want to shape up these boots. I want to give them a backside here, and then eventually we'll take off more of this heft here and more of this heft here. we got to decide what design we want. And once we get that body roughly shaped in, we can re return to the head because those two things have to work together. You can't have too big a head for too little a body, and you can't have too little a head for too big a body. You got to make them fit in there. And by the same token, we got to do something with that hat. So when we move it back, I can see the hat is just a little bit bigger on this side than that side. And we've got to make sure that the, the hat goes right up into that, the head goes right up into that hat. And that's a big old head. I'm going to trim him back because I got to make sure this angle is the same as the front of the hat. So. Uh, we'll stop here at, at the end of video number 10 and see where we're at and and uh, get those loaded on the computer and get ready for the next next little bit of, of getting this fellow going from what looks like a rock'em sock'em robot to, to a real caricature figure. So I'll get myself cleaned up here and we'll get rearranged and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Talk to you later.